Good afternoon, and welcome to The Way to Wow, People Making Money. I'm your host, Kevin Bemmel, and thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, last week, we started talking about the idea that money isn't the only thing that drives job satisfaction. Indeed, the culture of the organization in which you work has a huge impact on how much you'll enjoy your job. Excuse me one second, my glasses are, for anyone who wears glasses, you know what I'm talking about. There's a, a, a weird spot in the middle of my glasses. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that, little, little digression. So um, uh, corp organizational culture has a tremendous impact on uh, how much we enjoy our work. And so we talked about seven aspects of organizational culture that impact job satisfaction, happiness at work, et cetera. And uh, if you're interested in those, I invite you to go to our YouTube channel, uh, The Way to Wow Show on YouTube, and you can watch that episode there. You can also watch lots of other episodes, of course, shameless plug, uh, and you can subscribe, even more shameless plug, right? Uh, have it, but uh, in, in any event, uh, today we're gonna talk about how you figure out what an organization's culture is. So oftentimes <clears throat> what we know about an organization, we, we know through advertising. So um, I'll take an example that leaps to mind, State Farm Insurance Company, right? Um, what, when I was much younger, they had a very famous jingle that was written by Barry Manilow, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, right? Who doesn't want to work at a company that's like a good neighbor, right? And, and, and I, you know, to this day, uh, I, you know, think of State Farm as being uh, a, a, a great place to work. And of course, now there's the, I think it's Jake at State Farm commercials. And Jake seems like such a nice guy. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he is, right? Um, you know, does everyone who works for State Farm, are they like Jake? I, I don't know, but it presents, right, a picture of a company that's a very pleasant company to do business with and, and probably a pleasant company to work at as well. Is that actually the case? Do the people who work at State Farm think of it as, you know, a wonderful place to work? Uh, honestly, I have no idea. Um, I do have a friend who, uh, you know, disparages State Farm, but he works for a competitor. So I guess, you know, that, that, that would explain at least part of it. In, in, in any event, we don't want to choose or, or analyze an organization's culture based on commercials or... Uh, you know, past childhood references or whatever. We want to assess it based on information that, you know, from a credible source and also based on impressions from people who are actually working there as opposed to people who maybe do business with the company. It's entirely possible. Um, look, I'll, I'll take, um, pardon me, a, another example from my youth. Um, I, I worked at Disneyland for, for several years, and I can assure you the experience of going to Disneyland was much better than the experience of working there. <laughs> um, there was a lot of employee dissatisfaction at, at Disneyland. Uh, and of course, like all large employers, not all of it was justified, uh, but, but some of it certainly was. Um, there were some really awful supervisors who worked there when I was working there. Um, you know, some of the work conditions could be really unpleasant. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so, you know, the experience of being a customer of Disneyland was very, very different than being an employee there. So, uh, and, and of course, I, I worked there because I loved to go there, right? That was my motivation. And, and you know, that, that was a very uh, important early lesson in, in my work life, uh, if not my professional life. I, I was never a Disney uh, professional. So uh, I'm going to uh, bring up my uh, book again. And we're going to talk about how do you get uh, intelligence is, is the word we use, you know, in the military, information on uh, organizational 
culture. I'm going to move this over so I'm more likely to be, you know, looking looking at you. <laughs> so, and 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 th again, this is this is my book, The Eight Deadly Sins of Job Hunting. Um, this happens to be targeted specifically to veterans. Although, if you're not a veteran, I think you will still find it uh, very very useful. And uh, just like last week, if you uh, would like a PDF copy of the book, just use the email address that will be in the show notes after this episode posts on, um, on YouTube. And I will be happy to send you a link to my Google Drive where you can download uh, a PDF copy of the book. Uh, it, it, I was just talking to someone about it earlier today, and I was telling her it is a step-by-step task by task process for finding the job that you want so it it takes uh the guest work if you will out of out of uh, your job hunt you know what do i do today what do i do later today what do i do at the end of today what do i do tomorrow etc you never have to worry about that you can start at the beginning go straight through and you don't even necessarily have to know what job you want. It will help you figure that out as well, as well as figuring out what you're qualified for, uh, you know, what is a, a viable uh, job in, in the marketplace today, et cetera. So it's, it's a very comprehensive guide. You can use it that way. And you can also use it just uh, to, uh, back to uh, enhance your ability in a particular area of job searching, like, like finding out organizational culture. Uh, preferably, at least in part, before you take your time to, you know, interview with a company and go through a whole long thing, um, get to know it uh, uh, ahead of time, and 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 that can be useful. So, yeah, anyway, we're going to have to move this down here. Okay, so we're going to go to page, I believe it's one twenty six. He said, "There we go, All right there you go." Okay, so, um, you know. So gathering cultural intel, right? A, a, a nice military jargon term to start. Um, and and you know you see that 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 cool airplane there. That's a, that's an E two. Um, th those are flown by the Navy to do uh, command and control work. You'll notice they're a prop driven aircraft. Which wait wait a prop driven in today's day? Uh, yes, because they launch from the carrier and they just kind of hang up hang out above the carrier and. Um, and, and because they're up high, they have a much lar uh, lar larger horizon that they can gather uh, intelligence from than you can from the ship itself, which is, you know, which is much lower down and, and it hits the limits of the horizon much more quickly. So, so you've got a, you know, a pilot and a co-pilot up here front, and then you have a bunch of naval flight officers here in, here in the back. Uh, gathering data and and transmitting it to the ship and to the other aircraft in the air wing, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, one of the, uh, I think, most underrated traits that we can develop just for life in general is curiosity. Now, you know, I, I think in some ways, our, our culture kind of beats it out of us, not, not literally, of course, but as kids, it seems like we're pretty naturally curious about the life, about the world around us, about life, about, I don't know, all kinds of things. I know when I was a kid, I was always looking into this, looking into that, and I see it with my, my daughter as well. She's, it's one of the things she loves about uh, YouTube is there's videos on virtually anything that she wants to know about. That trait if we've lost it, is really something we need to kindle anew, because the the uh, function of being curious, wanting to know about things, will make a lot of the process of job hunting much easier. It can be incredibly boring doing some of this research work. Uh, so you know, if you can turn it into something like a game, that will make it more fun. So, you know, 
uh, when I say sleuthing, you know, I kind of have this picture of uh, someone with a, you know, a, a cloak on and a, and a Sherlock Holmes hat, right? And, they're, and a magnifying glass and they're going and, you know, finding out information about, about a company. I think that's the kind of, that's the kind of curiosity. If we can build that in ourselves, will be very, very useful to this process, as well as a lot of, like I said, a lot of other things in our life, building our relationships, et cetera. So um, if, if you have two qualities, one I mentioned, curiosity, and the other, impartiality, you will have a significant advantage as you look to figure out the, or the culture of a particular organization that you may be interested in. So why impartiality? Well, because sometimes you'll find things out about a company and they may not seem very good, okay? Um, if we can look at them in a somewhat impartial way and just dig beyond what may be a surface impression, we may find that whatever that aspect of the culture is that doesn't look so good, isn't really what we thought it was. So rather than just assuming something about a company, if, if we can just as impartially as possible, investigate it and, uh, um, and, and, and sort of, you know, keep digging, we will be, you know, much, much better off. So, so I just wanted to mention those two things that are kind of, you know, the mindset of, of doing research. Okay. So, I talk about your TOC, your target organization culture. That's, you know, you're, you're interested in, I don't know, State Farm. We, we were talking about that a minute ago. How are you going to, that's your target organization. What is their organizational culture? So there are several ways of digging up information. And I'm sure it comes as no surprise that one of the most efficient is to do your research online. There's a tremendous amount of information online, as you know, and there's a tremendous amount of information about companies online, some of which they put there, others, uh, other sources are gathered by aggregators of data, and they can be useful because I'm sure you can appreciate if you're looking at a company's website, you're, they're probably not saying it's a, it's a real bummer working here, you know, <laughs> they're not going to do that. They're going to present their, you know, their best public face that they possibly can. And so we're going to need more than one, uh, you know, source of information in order to get an accurate picture of, of a company. And I want to I want to point out another word here. You know, a healthy dose of skepticism is is a good thing. Keep keep digging. Don't accept just the, the, the at face value what you find good or bad, by the way. OK, um, sometimes people will be, you know, someone will be mad at a company and they'll get a bunch of people together to just slam the company. And, and in reality, it's just one unhappy person, one customer who had a bad experience. And now they're just, you know, excoriating the company when indeed the company is, is you know, both, you know, very good to its customers and very good to its employees. Or, by the way, I hasten to add. Um, if a customer had a bad experience, um, it may be because the company has takes the position that the customer is not always right. You know, sometimes we have to back up our employees, even in, in the face of a customer complaint, because in our judgment, the customer complaint is unreasonable. So I don't know about you. I would much rather work for a company that takes that position. Right, I, I know it's very, very popular to say the customer is always right. It, it was a, 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 a trend for a number of decades. It may still be a trend in certain segments of the business world. Um, I, don't, I don't buy that. The customer is not always right. And in, in one of the most important lessons I ever learned in business was the client is not always right. Sometimes people are just overly demanding. They are rude. They are nasty, and um, you know, if 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 um, if someone came up to one of my uh, people and and started yelling and screaming at them, even if they had a legitimate problem, the yelling and screaming is not called for. And if 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 the person will not calm down and 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 rein in their behavior, um, 
I'm most likely going to back up my employee or the person I'm working with. Not most likely, I'm going to. Um, and then if I find out subsequent to that, okay, so the the you know the person I'm working with did something very provocative that set the other person off. Okay, so we'll have to work out that situation. But assuming that the person was was handling things as well as they could in 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 the you know onslaught of this uh, customers or clients you know emotional uh, you know uh, tantrum, I, I'm backing up my the person I'm working with. Because I, I, I don't want to do business with people who, who treat other people badly. I, I, I don't want to do that. I, I, I do my best not to do that when I'm in a place of business and I don't want people doing it to the people I'm working with. So I, I think, you know, just because a company has some, some bad customer ratings, that isn't necessarily a sign of, of bad culture. Um, it could conversely being be a sign of good culture. So that's why I say, you know, be be skeptical about some of the stuff you 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 read or research and really, you know, dig into the facts. OK, so that being said, oh, and look there, it says it, that being said. So one of the first places to go to is an organization's uh, website. Um, uh, you know, you're going to get some basic information there. What is its mission? What are its values? What are the biographies of the, the top executives? You may even find an organizational chart. You'll find promotional and marketing materials. And the public face that the company puts on, okay, it may not jive with who you are or what you value, okay? So, uh, and, 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 and that's fine. Um, I could come up. I don't want to. I don't want to get into politics, but I could come up with some examples of you know what's going on currently, where there are certain companies that have a particular view politically, and it's going to be on their. It's on their website, right? And if you go there, and that does not comport with your values, so I think right then and there, you're done. Don't go to work for that company. It's it's not going to be a good fit. You're going to be uncomfortable there, and and rather than you know going through a, 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 a bad situation, just say, hey, look, they're saying up front, this is who we are. You know, good good for them to to be honest. Um, and there's and and to a certain extent, there's a self selection process that goes on there. So uh, I, I think you know take take those things pretty much at face value now. You know, when it comes to mission statement, statements of value, of, of values. So read those and, and see, do, are those things I want to be involved in? Are those values that I share? Okay. Now, in this case, one of the things you want to check is, are they acting consistent with that mission? So, you know, if, 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 if a company is professing to have a mission to save the planet, um, and yet uh, you know they're responsible for you know deforesting millions of acres of the rainforest in Brazil, so uh, you know you could I think you would you would agree that their their mission they're not really acting in accordance with their mission, okay, and and that brings up two things. One is if 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 that mission is something that resonates with you and they're not working really toward that mission. So that's a problem. And the second is the hypocrisy, right? They're saying this is our mission and yet they're acting completely counter to the mission, right? So there's two issues there. And, and in some ways I would say the hypocrisy is probably the, the worst of the two. I'm not, say, I'm not saying deforestation is a good thing. I mean, in terms of company culture um, that, that they want to try and fool us into thinking they're uh, they have a certain mission when indeed they're acting the opposite. That that's to me uh, again. That 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 would be a, a a deal killer, so to speak. So so you can you can look up on their website. Um, you you also should be able to find information that they have. If, if well, if it's a publicly traded company, I should say, you will be able to find information that they have to submit periodically to the Securities and Exchange Commission. And it'll tell you more information about um, what, what the, the C-suite structure is, the executive structure of the company. It'll tell you about the different divisions of the company, where it's operating. It'll it may highlight projects in which they're involved. It may highlight the countries in which the company is involved, if it's a multinational company. So you can 
find all of that information and typically it'll be on the company's website. Now, um, when you're looking for their um, different uh, SEC filings, you, you in fact may click on something and it'll take you to another website, you know, through a hyperlink, you know, that that's fine. I mean, just know that they may not store that literally on their website because they can do it through hyperlinks. Okay, so so that's a that's a good place to start. The next place I would recommend you go is to their uh, social media, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Social media presence, okay? Most companies today, above and beyond their website, have a social media presence of some kind, especially if they're a larger company, they pretty much have to at this point. So the first place to check is LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn is the social media site for, you know, career and business matters. Okay, and and, and first of all, the, the company or the organization may have a LinkedIn page just for the organization. In other words, apart from any individual, right? LinkedIn started out like all the other social media sites. You went and you created your LinkedIn profile and you could interact with other people. But then eventually they created pages. Um, so for example, I have a, a, a LinkedIn page for the Way to Wow show. Um, I think it'll link to my profile, my personal profile, but, but the page is separate for the Way to Wow show. So again, you will find information there about the company. Oftentimes they will have videos, they will have um, uh, articles that they, you know, people in the, in the organization have written. Um, you'll get an idea of who may be following them. That can be useful. And you'll also be able to see some of the people who are associated with the organization. And that's very valuable because you can reach out to those people at some point to talk to them about the company, okay? Especially if it's before you've applied there, this is something I recommend you do for, for a number of reasons. One is to get more information about the organization's culture. Two is to develop relationships with people who are already there so that if you do decide at some point you want to apply for a job there, you'll be able to do so through an insider as opposed to just, you know, applying through a job board or applying blindly. The vast majority of jobs and the higher level the job, the more likely this is to be the case, the vast majority of jobs are given to people who have a connection to someone already at the company. People who are applying from outside the company with, with no one on the inside kind of running interference for them are extremely unlikely to get a position in that company. That's, that's just the way it is statistically. You can say, well, that's horrible or they're overlooking great talent. That, the, both of those may be the case. Here in the reality of the real world, that, that's how it works, okay? And, and I, I don't know what will necessarily change that because when a company is, is looking for good people, one of the things they do is, is, you know, people in the company know this position is open and they're looking for people to fill it. And if they know a friend that they like that, that fits that position, they want to work with their friend. I, wouldn't you want to work with your friends, right? I was just talking, again, talking to somebody earlier today, a friend of mine, he's looking to fill a particular position in his company. And I said, hey, let me introduce you to someone I know who knows a lot of people in that industry. And, you know, maybe he can help you out. So instead of having to, you know, sort of fly blind or fly by the seat of your pants, they used to say, um, and that, 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 that's a colorful expression. I'm not sure where it comes from. Anyway, he can get a referral from, you know, a, 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 a very close friend of a friend of his kind of thing, right? Um, you know, that's, that's the way, that's the way it goes. Now, um, you will get uh, more information, well, better searching ability if you buy a LinkedIn premium membership. Now, they are kind of expensive, okay? I had one for a few years because they give uh, free memberships to veterans for, uh, I think it used to be five years. I think it may only be three years now. I don't remember exactly, um, but it was very, very useful. Uh, like I said, it is kind of expensive and, and typically it's bought by 
by recruiters and, and people who are looking to hire a lot of people. So it, it may not really be worth your while to get that you know premium membership in LinkedIn in order to get the more sophisticated searching ability. Having said that, the the, the basic searching ability is 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 pretty good, and you should be able to find a lot of what you need in terms of uh, gathering intelligence about an organization's culture. So again, start on LinkedIn, find out if, if the organization has a page, find out if they have some kind of LinkedIn group that they sponsor, look up people, look at the profiles of people who are currently working for the organization. And also, if you can, look up the profiles of people who no longer work for the organization, but did at one time. And if you can connect with those people and say, hey, why did you leave? Well, I got a better job, so I moved on. Okay, well, that's fine. Okay. Or are you kidding? I hated it there. Oh, why did you hate it there? Oh, I mean, it was the worst organizational culture I've ever experienced. Oh, really? Wow, that's horrible. What, what, was, what made it so bad? Okay, don't just take people's assessments for you know their experiences that's not to say that their experiences aren't true for them but what may be a horrible environment for them may be you know no big deal for you okay so you know we're not all the same and so you know we we uh we need to dig again dig deeper look below the surface be somewhat impartial as you do this kind of research okay and then the next thing, uh, you know, there's other social media sites, Facebook, Twitter. Um, you know, uh, t Facebook is not a, 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 a great place, especially for a large company. I mean, they have a presence. I, I, you know, probably you're going to find better information on LinkedIn, but there may be some good information on Facebook. It's worth spending at least a few minutes seeing if, if anything's there. Twitter is a place to go. Um, First of all, to see if there is a company feed to see what kind of things they're tweeting. And second, to see if any of the, especially the senior people in the company are on Twitter and tweeting things, because that will give you insight into who they are. So, you know, look, I think it's no surprise that, that Twitter can be somewhat of a cesspool when it comes to uh, the things that people say and, 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 and the sort of attacks and all of that kind of thing. Um, having said that, um, if you've got, I don't know, the CEO of a company and, and they're, you know, being particularly provocative or attacking of a, on a certain issue or something, and, and, and that's, and, and, and that makes you uncomfortable, you know, Look, here's the here's the, this is the reality of, of of human beings, right? If we're in a you know organization with you know a hierarchy, one of the things people do to move up the hierarchy is they sort of go along with what the higher ups say and think, even if they don't believe it themselves. So if 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 the you know head person is uh, saying and behaving in a certain way, a lot of times people lower down will do the same thing, even if they personally don't like it, because that's how they see their ability to get promoted is. So you're likely to be subject to that. And do you want to play that game? And do you want to be subject to the, you know, the behavior or the ideas or whatever? That's a decision I think, you know, you need to make. Now, if you have a thick skin and it's, you know, in, in the end, it's not really that important. You just find it, you know, annoying or whatever. Okay, so that's your choice. Uh, I'm not saying that if someone expresses an opinion different than yours, that therefore you should rule them out as a company. What I'm saying is know what you may be facing at that company so that you can make an informed decision about the culture that you will be in if you go to work there. Right. And Twitter can give you, uh, you know, some some insight into that because it is such a uh, freewheeling kind of uh, platform. OK. And then I, I mentioned groups. Um, you know, there are thousands and thousands of groups on both LinkedIn and, and Facebook these days. And there may be a group for that company. Now, the group itself may be closed. You may not be able to get into the group. It may be only be for employees of an organization. 
that just may be the thing, but you may be able to find out if someone is in the group that you know or something like that. So uh, that's another uh, you know thing to look at. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, employee review sites. So I uh, mentioned before, you're gonna wanna go to some outside sources of information. And employee review sites are a good place to do that because they are specifically set up to allow people who work at an organization to talk about what it's like to do so, okay? And you see some of the names of them here, um, Career Bliss Career Community, Glassdoor, The Muse, Vault, Wet Fee. Um, now, to be honest with you, um, I, I don't know that all of these are, are, are still around. I know Glassdoor is, um, I, I believe Vault is as well. Uh, in, in any event, all you need to do is Google employee review sites or do a, do a, you know, a, a search for them and you'll find out which are the most active these days and, you know, search the organization. It's not only for-profit companies that are on these sites. Nonprofits are on it too. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if government uh, agencies are on it. They may be. Um, in any event, check out the reviews. Okay, now just know that most of the people who take the time to post about an organization on one of these sites is doing so because they're disgruntled. So you're rarely gonna find uh, posts that say, this is the greatest company to work for. I love it here. You, you know, you have to come work here. You're not, you're probably not gonna see that. And if you do, I would be a little bit skeptical about that. It may be that the company went to their people and said, hey, we got all these terrible reviews on Glassdoor. Can some of you go on there and at least, you know, say something nice about us? Because, gosh, I didn't think we were, you know, the Attila the Hun of our industry or whatever. Um, and that's not to say that a good review is necessarily suspect, uh, only to say that, uh, you know, you have to kind of look at the overall picture, right? So that's why you want to use multiple sources. So um, one of the things to look at too is how long has the person who's made the comments about the company been at the company? Are they brand new? And if they're brand new and saying really great things, are they kind of in their you know honeymoon phase, so to speak? Have they been there a long time and they're really invested in the company? And uh, have they recently been fired? And, and if so, I, it generally, I don't think it'll say this, but you know, keep in mind, were they fired for cause? Were they laid off? You know, what was the, what was the nature of the, of, 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 what was the reason that they left the company? If someone is fired, especially fired for cause, and they feel that, that, that they were treated unjustly, I'm sure you can imagine, they, they can have very, very negative feelings about the company, makes perfect sense. Doesn't mean though, that the company deserves the criticism. It may have been that this person was behaving badly or, or, or you know, doing wrong things or whatever. And the, the company, in order to improve the atmosphere for other employees, fired this person, right? So, so again, be a little, be some somewhat skeptical, keep an open mind, be impartial as you gather this data and let it just kind of sift through your mind until it seems that after you've got a lot of data, it seems to be coalescing around certain ideas. Okay, so those are the uh, employee review sites. Now, uh, you can also check news sites. Um, you know, if, if you've got a particular uh, organization that you that you're interested in, I would encourage you to go to Google 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 <laughs> Google News Alerts, and you will get an email uh, anytime that uh, well, I, sh I shouldn't say anytime because I don't think that's the case. But most of the time that that organization shows up, uh, at least somewhat prominently on the internet, and then you can click through and see. What, what that particular piece is saying about the company. But you can also just search any, any your, whatever your favorite news aggregator is. Again, do a search of news aggregator if you don't have one that you use all the time anyway. And then once you're there, search the name of the organization that you're interested in and you know see what comes up, right? So 
like if you were interested in NASA, I would imagine right now the kind of things coming up are, are like the Artemis program, right? That's the program to take people back to the moon. Um, and, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what else are, that's the big program at NASA right now, I think. Um, some of the stuff with SpaceX, I think is still, you know, somewhat timely. So you're probably seeing, you know, stuff about that if you were to look at the news on, on NASA, et cetera. Um, and and uh, so again, another way just to get an idea of what is the company involved with, how newsworthy is it? You know, if you don't find any news about a company, it doesn't mean anything other than A, they may not seek that kind of publicity. B, they're just a, you know, they're a company that they're not, you know, lighting fires anywhere, so to speak. They're doing good work, but it's just not anything that, you know, they're making a, a, a big deal about, okay? All right, so that's, uh, again, news sites. Next, financial information sites, okay? So, like, Yahoo Finance is, is, is one of them. These are, when I mentioned before about looking up financial uh information on an organization's website and if it's a publicly traded company and you can you might click on a link to what's called its 10k this is a filing that companies have to make periodically publicly traded companies have to make periodically okay so sometimes what will happen is they'll actually hyperlink you to one of these financial information sites rather than uploading all that information to their own website OK, and and what you will find in these sites is generally a, a, a brief financial profile, how large the company is in terms of employees, revenue, where it's located, what its primary lines of business are, whether it's publicly traded. And if so, you know, you'll, you'll have access to its filings, which have to be uh, publicly accessible. Uh, you know, top executives oftentimes are briefly profiled there. That, that's the kind of thing you will find. It'll give you a, a, a quick summary of a company. It may also have some links there. Uh, like you, you might start, the, if you start there, you'll have a link typically to the, the organization's website. Uh, and, and it may have links to other things relevant to that particular company, maybe new news articles of recent developments impacting the company. So you can look up all that on financial information sites. And again, just search financial information sites. Uh, and and well, here's, here's some of them, uh, CNBC, CNN Money, Financial Times, um, and, and you can get a full business profile on Financial Times, okay? Google Finance, The Street. So the SEC's Electric Data Gathering Analysis and Retrieval site, Edgar, right? Everything in the government has to have some kind of acronym. So Edgar has all the 10K filings, the annual reports, the 10Qs, the quarterly reports, okay? And also, of course, anything having to do with, with business, for-profit businesses primarily, uh, the Wall Street Journal is, you know, the business newspaper. Um, I, I read the Wall Street Journal every day it's published. Um, I do that to keep up with the business news. I, I like a, you know, paper newspaper as opposed to you know reading something online and um uh so it's it's a it's a great source of information it's also a great way to just keep up with a, a, you know particular industries so that that you know if you're interested in a particular uh business whether it's you know auto, automobiles uh media and entertainment uh, real estate whatever it is so you know you if, if you read the wall street journal on a regular basis uh, you will pretty quickly get a feel for how things are going in that industry, what the major issues are, how they're being handled, what are the trends, what are the major players in that industry, et cetera. I, I should hasten that I have no financial interest in the Wall Street Journal, <laughs> um, although I will say I, you know, like many people my age, I, you know, I, I, I Hope that you know we will continue to see uh, paper printed, you know, newspapers uh, for the foreseeable future. Because, like I said, I, I like being able to spend 15, 20 minutes each morning with uh, you know a cup of coffee or espresso, reading you know the paper. It's it's a nice relaxing thing to do. So as opposed to you know the rest of my day where I'm seem to be looking at a computer screen. So okay, so that's that is online research, and those those are all sources that you can uh, access uh, pretty readily, shouldn't cost you any money. Um, you may, with the Wall Street Journal, of course, it, like it has a paywall, 
like most periodicals these days, but oftentimes at least parts of their articles are available so you can read a little bit about them. And, um, you know, uh, I, maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't know. I think it's okay. You know, if you have someone who subscribes to the Wall Street Journal and there's a particular article you want to read that you don't have asset access to, they can access it create a PDF, email it to you. And depending on how good a friend they are, that's probably how many times they will, you know, do that for you. So um, please no requests for Wall Street Journal PDFs to me um, that, that, I, that I cannot do in good conscience uh, because, you know, I, I think that's, that's taking advantage of them. So, all right. Now, offline research. Another good thing to do is to look, you know, get out from your get out from behind your computer and go and research the company or the organization. Now, one of the things to do, especially if if it's located nearby where you live, is go and you know drive by its place of business or its place of operations. Take a look at it. Okay, that'll tell you something. If it's uh, located in, you know, a heavy industrial area of, of uh, you know, the area in which you live. Obviously, you don't live in an industrial area, but I mean, in, in the, you know, the city you live in, um, you know, it may not be a heavy industrial business, but maybe that area wasn't heavy industrial when they located there and they've just stayed there even as the area has changed. Okay. So, you know, take a look at that. Why is that the case? I think that brings up several questions. You know, why do you continue to be located here as opposed to having migrated somewhere else where similar businesses to yours have gone? And there could be perfectly good reasons like, well, you know, we've been an anchor of employment in this area for the last 50 years. And although the area around us has changed somewhat, we feel it's important to continue to be an anchor of employment in the area. And we, we were invested in the local community and we're gonna stay that way. Okay, well, there you go. I mean, I, sounds good to me. I mean, now you may say, okay, I got it. So in other words, you're not leaving this area for the, you know, in the near term anyway. No, we're not. It's like, okay, not really interested in living in an area where there's a lot of, you know, heavy industry around me. Um, okay, well, so, that, so then there you go there. And, and again, uh, this is not about is it the you know is it a good corporate culture or a bad cult, corporate culture necessarily it's about does does the corporate culture is it going to be a good fit for you in the end that's what we're looking for is it a good fit for you we'll set the value judgments aside those i think are better discussed when we've got you know a bottle of bourbon and and and, and some water in front of us and <laughs> keep can hopefully keep you know the, the the tempers down a little bit okay so but do do a drive by take take a look um and 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 that will give you some information okay libraries and museums so you can call um, your your uh, public library the reference desk and ask for information on the organization and they will they will give you some okay I'm, I've, I've done this many 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 times okay um, and and most libraries these days um, have people who are specially trained to do research and if you tell them that you are working on your job hunt and you're looking to get information on some organizations that you're considering applying to, I think you will probably get a pretty good response, okay? Because, you know, you're, you're giving the, the, the reference librarian a real purpose to the work that you're asking to be, you know, to, be, to have done. And, 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 you know, as compared to some of the stuff they get, you know, it, it's nice to have something really, you know, meaty behind uh, the, the work that they're doing. So visit them in person, call them on the phone, whatever works for you. Um, I note in, in my book, by the way, especially if you're a veteran, you know, note that you're a veteran. People like to help out veterans. It, it makes them feel good. And so, you know, let, let, let them feel good. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, you know, you may say, well, museums, what, uh, what do you mean museums? Well, um, I mean, you know, randomly calling a museum, of course, is 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 not going to be useful. But you, there may be a museum related to the particular industry in which you're interested, and so by calling that museum, 
you can get some background on an organization that you're considering going to work for. Now, when I say background, I mean more like history. And that may, that may be relevant to you for some reason. OK, so, uh, you know, it, it, this isn't the first thing I would I would, you know, recommend that you do. But I put it on the list here because if you really want to dig in deeply, if you're really, really interested in a particular company, you may want to know something about um, its, its history. Now, this is this is not, by the way, a knock on h and I assume it's a perfectly good company. Uh, the reason I'm using this example is I, I, I think it's funny. So when I was stationed in Germany, uh, we would uh, periodically uh, take uh, a trip to, I, I believe it was Trier. And uh, in Trier, there was a particular cafe that my friends and I used to take people to pretty much every time we went there because they had illy coffee there. And one particular friend of mine, he's, this is the only coffee he drinks is Illy coffee. And, and I will say, I, I do very much love uh, their, their, their coffee. So we'd be sitting in the, and across the street was the H&M store in Trier. <laughs> the funny thing was, after we had our coffee, we would take the people we were, we were with on a tour of World War II sites in Trier. And the building in which H&M had its store now used to be Gestapo headquarters in Trier back in the, I think, of mid-30s, mid to late 30s, right? Now, <laughs> that is no reflection on H&M. It just, it's just a, a funny coincidence. And people would always note, and, they, and almost always, somebody would say, well, is, 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 is H&M affiliated with Nazis? I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. It just, it shows you how, you know, these kind of things can change, right? And it's just a funny coincidence. Uh, having said that, look, there are companies that have been around for a long, long time that, you know, they may have connections to things that were not so savory, shall we say, in the past. And that may be something you just really don't want to be involved with. Okay. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. Again, this is about finding an organization that fits your sensibilities, fits your needs, delivers on your job satisfaction. So, you know, if being associated with an organization that did bad things in the past just rankles you, then, then you know, you, you're perfectly justified in excluding that organization from your job hunt. Um, on the other hand, it may be, okay, well, I know it. it. You know, nobody is alive today who, you know, in the company who was doing that, you know, 100 years ago. Um, it's good to know that this is their legacy. Um, one of the things you might want to check out is, you know, have they really moved beyond whatever bad things they were involved with in the past. And if they have, well, good for them. I, you know, I think we have to be open to redemption among, you know, people as well as organizations to a certain extent. So again, just food for thought, not saying you have to do anything one way or the other, but just th something to think about. Okay, next, conventional publications. Although these, law, these days, almost all publications are online, there are some publications uh, that are not online. So, uh, for example, um, I get a publication called Vigneron, and it is a, uh, um, a publication about wines and winemaking in France. Um, they do have a website, but I don't think issues of the magazine are, are available on the website. And it's a beautiful magazine. Of course, it, it, it's in French. So um, I'll sit there and, you know, I'll, I mean, I'm, my French is decent. Um, but, I, you know, I look at the beautiful pho photographs and I'll, I'll read through some of the articles and kind of struggle through figuring out what they're talking about. Um, and, and I do it for two reasons. One is I want to improve my French. And two is I, I, you know, I'm very interested in wine. So it's, you know, France is one of the big sources of that. So, you know, go, go to the well, so to speak. So there are publications. In, and, and by the way, if you're interested, you know, in, in being in the wine and spirits business, um, you know, <laughs> and you want to know what's going on in France, um, you're going you're, you're gonna to get it much more directly from a publication like Vigneron 
than uh, you would from a website probably that's you know translated into English because it's not an exact translation. No, no translation is ever exact. You don't get the same feel from one language to another. It's, it's, a, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do. So, uh, you know, take a look at that. Um, and and you know, it can be difficult, by the way, to get a hold of them sometimes because it may have to be mailed to you. Uh, one of the things you can do is if you're looking for a particular um, conventional publication is check with um, a business library at a university or college. Now, oftentimes they will have such publications in their stacks. You may not be able to check them out, but you may be able to go to the university or college library and get access to them and at least look at them there on the premises. Okay, so some again, something to check out, another resource for you. If you are, hmm, excuse me, if you are still in college or university. So you have full access to the library resources there. Absolutely use them. You will find, especially in the business library, if you're interested in anything you know business related, they will have a ton of information. And oftentimes public libraries won't have the same information because they just can't afford to go that in depth on a single subject. Whereas a university with a business school they need to have that so that students and faculty can do research. Okay, so that so that there you go. Um, you know, and oh my gosh, we're already up at uh, fifty minutes. So the uh, another place to get information is from people. I mentioned this before, and you know, you can uh, connect with people at an organization. Uh, through through LinkedIn is the most effective way. And, and I, I have a, a lot, you can see a long list of questions that you can ask uh, people. Generally speaking, you want to ask open-ended questions. So, you know, you can say, uh, do you like working there? Yeah. <laughs> so you're not getting much information, right? Better question is, what's your favorite part about working for the company or for the organization? What's the thing you like least about working for this organization or company, right? And that way they have to, they'll have to think a little bit, but you'll get much greater, a, a much greater amount of information, much more useful information. And the idea is, is get them talking, okay? Once you've got them talking in general, unless they go off on some kind of tangent, just let them talk and take notes. Okay, because the more they talk, generally the deeper they'll, the deeper they'll get into something, and and the more authentic you'll the, the information will be more authentic, right? Because they're not thinking about it quite as much to make sure am I following the company line, you know that kind of thing. They'll give you you'll get a much truer impression from them. Okay, so your job is to be is, is in essence to be an interviewer, uh, you know, a journalist, if you will, get the person talking. And, and so have, you know, at least five to seven open-ended questions. You know, again, um, uh, if you want to get a, a PDF copy of my book, you, you've got them all right here for you, right? You can just pick out these or you can just put this list in front of you and you can just use, you know, this, this list of questions here. Talk to people. Now, um, you can do that when you're researching a company. And you can and you can find out, you know, ahead of time whether you even want to be there and do it as kind of as do it as an informational an informational interview, or you may want to do it after you're already in into the hiring process or the the not, not the hiring process the recruitment process, and and you may reach out to some people and say, hey, you know, I'm 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 in the recruitment process for your company and I'm I'm interested to learn more about it. Would you? Could I, uh, you know, would you be willing to uh, have a, you know, short phone call with me? And by the way, when I when I tell people a short phone call, usually what I'll say is something like, "May I, you know, would you be interested in speaking to me for 25 minutes?" Okay, 25 minutes is a very specific length of time. 15 minutes means around 15 minutes. 30 minutes means around 30 minutes. 
25 minutes is 25 minutes. <laughs> In other words, there's a reason, that, you know, people assume there's a reason for the preciseness and, and so stick with it. So when you get to the 24 minute point, um, when, when I do this, I'll say, hey, you know, we're, 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 we're coming up on 25 minutes here in the next minute or so. I, I, I just want to, you know, thank you for your time. I, I know I, you know, committed to only taking 25 minutes of it. And so I don't want to go beyond that. Now, by the way, I would say hmm, at least a third of the time people say, oh, it's OK if we want to take a few more minutes. I, I have the time. And I'll say, you know, as long as I'm not being a bother, as long as I'm not, you know, imposing, no, 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 it's perfectly fine. Let's finish our conversation. Well, thank you very much. And then we finish the conversation and, you know, sort of dos vidanya, as, as they say. Uh, should I be using Russia, Russian right now? I guess so. I think it's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, once you're on the, on site, so, um, you know, look around, observe, observe the, you know, the workspace itself an on-site visit, take a look at the people, how they're dressed, how they interact, um, you know, look at the physical layout, all of those kinds of things, all, they're all indicative of company or, or organizational culture, okay? And then finally, when you're at an actual meeting, now it could be a meeting, you know, a face-to-face -face meeting. It could be, you know, a Zoom meeting or a phone call. Um, you know, what, what we call, I call it a meeting to discuss a job. They're usually called interviews. I don't like the term interview because it implies that you're somehow, you know, asking for something. Uh, you know, go into the meeting. You are looking to gather information just like the organization is looking to gather information. And one of the things you want to gather information about is the organization's culture. Don't hesitate to ask questions about it. Use the questions here in my book or come up with others on your own that are you know, more relevant to your concerns, but don't hesitate to ask the questions. And by the way, here's some, here's some other questions specifically designed for a, a meet, an actual meeting. If you could describe your corporate culture in three words or phrases, what would you say and why, okay? Why? That's really important. Uh, you know, innovative. Why innovative? Um, well, you know, it's a funny thing. We're actually not that innovative, but that's what the company says it wants to be. Mm, good piece of information or innovative. Well, you know, we are always trying out new things. We're trying out new ways to serve our customers. We're looking at new ways to take care of our employees. We're always looking for new things to do to make things better for everybody. Great, okay? Or, or maybe not. Maybe you don't like a rapidly changing uh, culture or a rapidly changing environment, okay? So here's more questions you can ask at a sit-down meeting. Look, here you go, like I think two and a half, three pages of them, okay? All right, and, 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 and this is really the core. And this is why I've done these last two sessions on the issue of organizational culture. Organizational culture and relationships equal job satisfaction, okay? Pay is important, but I think we make a mistake when we look only at the financial side of a relationship with an organization, a company, a nonprofit, the government, whatever, okay? So it really is worth your time and effort to check that out. There's a statistic, and I, I believe I, uh, this, is, this is probably not 100% accurate, and, and again, this relates to people coming out of the military, but something like 80% of people uh, quit their first post-military job in the first two years, and I think it's over 50% in the first year, and one of the reasons I think that is, is because they don't realize how different civilian workplace culture is from military workplace culture. And there's a necessity to adapt. And a lot of military people find that hard. And so thinking that, oh, if I just go somewhere else, I'll find a more, um, you know, uh, comfortable culture, they quit and go to another job. And it, sometimes it takes two, three, four job switches before they're comfortable enough in civilian workplace culture to be able to stick it out. Uh, you know, I think that's that may be a mistake um, on both, by the way, the employers and the employees. That kind of churn isn't necessarily good for anybody. So if if we will take the time 
to learn about organizations' cultures, that will also help us make shifts in our own outlook. We may find that, you know, this is just the way it is in the, in the civilian work world today. And, and nothing we do is gonna change that. So we've got to change ourselves. And that's a good thing to know because then we can work on it. We can't work on something we don't know about. All right. Well, listen, we're, we're uh, eight seconds to be out of time. Um, I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you found it worthwhile. And uh, as, as I always do, oh, I, I, I want to tell you about uh, my guest next week is Frankie Guzman. And I cannot wait for you to meet Frankie. He is just one of the most charismatic people I have met in a long, long time. Uh, we had a blast when we were together in a training. He was, he was actually the instructor for the training. He has an amazing story to tell. I'm only going to give you a little piece of it. He started out as a pig farmer. Okay, so how often are you going to hear the success story of someone else who started there? Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a pig farmer, but it's just, it's just, you know, people don't think of, I mean, there are people who still do this, right? And, and he, he did it for a while, and you'll hear his story as to where he is now. I invite you, encourage you to join us next week, Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday, 1230 Pacific Time. 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, an hour in for each of the other time zones. And I thank you very much for joining me and for watching. If you have a, if you like the show, please, you know, please click the like thing. If you have a comment, please share them, good or bad. Always looking for ways to make the show better. And so it just leaves for me to say in my closing, Marie, darling, up in heaven, you had such a wonderful impact on my life and you are still my bell. Thanks again, folks. Have a great rest of the day.